When EarthScope was started, uh, some of the key goals were really to map out the structure of North America, the continent, and the mantle uh, beneath it, and uh, really look at its properties, uh, uh, temperature, and uh, ultimately uh, its strength. EarthScope has now, at this point, kind of blanketed uh, Alaska and the rest of the lower 48 uh, with seismic and geodetic instruments. So it's been an incredible tool for discovery. Uh, we've seen things that we never even knew we were looking for. From the very beginning, um, the National Science Foundation uh, recognized the EarthScope's potential to make big advances in the field of Earth sciences, primarily because the instrumentation would be very densely spaced and would be widely distributed across the entire North American continent. EarthScope is like a telescope looking down inside the Earth. And it used three main kinds of tools. Uh, there was a seismic network or seismic array called US Array. And this basically rolled across the continent and is currently deployed up in Alaska. And the idea of that was to actually make images of what's inside the Earth. The US Array helped us to be able to image the whole continent in a way that we hadn't been able to before. That uh, a good example of this would be uh, the, the thickness of the crust that we live on. We were also able to look even deeper down underneath uh, the continent and see uh, the, the trail of a dead plate uh, that had been shoved underneath uh, millions of years ago coming in from the western part of the U.S. and now buried under the central and eastern part of the U.S. The Sandras Fault Observatory at depth is about a three kilometer long borehole into the Sandras Fault over a segment that it creeps so it doesn't generate large magnitude earthquakes but it just moves slowly or what we call aseismically. The goal being to drill through the fault to instrument it, to collect samples, and to just observe all we could about the fault zone. We've really shown that the San Andreas Fault, its intrinsic properties are very weak here. Um, previously been baited over whether it was a weak or strong fault, whether it slipped aseismically because of pressure along the fault zone, or if it was just the actual material properties. And SAFOD, with sampling of the core and being able to do laboratory measurements on it, really showed that this is really weak material. PBO, or Plate Boundary Observatory, is a network of over a thousand really sensitive GPS antennas that are mounted to bedrock throughout the United States. The Plate Boundary Observatory, which is a geodetic network, so using high-precision GPS uh, instruments uh, to measure the, the active deformation of the continent. So that would be tectonics, just the plate tectonic deformation. That would be earthquakes. And it turns out there are also other kinds of slip that happen on faults. Earthquakes are fast slip. There are these kinds of slow slip. And we can measure that uh, with uh, the Plate Boundary Observatory. And so this gave us great tools for looking at both the structure and the dynamics of the continent. One of the cool things to result from the project is this new field called hydrogeodesy. Hydrogeodesy um, is using GPS signals to infer information about the Earth's hydrologic cycle. So you can do things like measure groundwater, soil moisture, snowpack, or even tidal level with GPS data. The data from the PBO have been used for a variety of different things, from understanding the evolution of the recent California drought to quantifying how much water was dumped in Texas during Hurricane Harvey. The data from the PBO network are going to continue to be useful for many years. There's two ways that people can easily have access to what um, science and educational activities have come out of EarthScope. If people go to the EarthScope website, they can look at the science nugget map, and the map shows uh, different links to descriptions of different projects that have been funded because of EarthScope. Additionally, there's an app called Flyover Country that people can download to their phones and when they're traveling on uh, an airplane, they can look at the, the app and learn about different EarthScope discoveries and uh, it's available offline and online so there's no trouble when people are up in the air and they don't have Wi-Fi access. EarthScope also encouraged people from different disciplines to work together. The fact that we had all of this data and this uh, geographic scope uh, really encouraged people to bring together information from multiple sources in a way that doesn't always happen uh, naturally. EarthScope has been enormously successful. I see the legacy as really having four parts. The first part is the science that was able to be done that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to accomplish without EarthScope. The second part of the legacy is the data. 
A lot of different seismic geodetic data were recorded as a result of Earthscope, and that data will be available forever. The third part is the instrumentation. A lot of instrumentation was installed across the United States through Earthscope, and much of that instrumentation has been adopted by other federal, state, and local agencies. And then fourth, the people of Earthscope. A whole generation of scientists were educated as a result of Earthscope, and they are now scientists and making their own contributions to the field of Earth sciences. 